Good day and welcome to our unboxing, disassembly, potential upgrade, configuration, setup, and benchmarking review of the Lenovo Yoga 370. Now this is a refurb because these units are from about 2017. So let me give you a little bit of background. This unit uh, is replacing a Dell 3300. Uh, which Lat Latitude, which is a student uh, product, education-focused product with a rubberized edge, but it's roughly the same spec. So I'm going to put up on the screen here the actual specs of these units. But it's uh, this is an i5-7300U, uh, which is a two x four, as we like to call it. That is uh, two cores uh, with uh, two hyper threads for a total of four threads running at the same time. Eight gig of RAM, a quarter terabyte SSD. And what the Yoga has over the Latitude is that it folds, so it bends right over, it's a two-in-one, whereas the, uh, what the Dell has over the Yoga is the Dell's probably just a manufactured, just probably just a better product mechanically, and uh, that rubberized edge makes it great for dropping. Okay, enough of that, let's get to it. So what we're gonna do is open this up, we're gonna break the big refurbished seal, and yes, I have proper tools, but I'm gonna assume you don't, so we're gonna do this, um, in a way that you would do it at home. Uh, so you don't get stuck with the, well, gee, I don't have that. I can't, I can't change the hard drive. I can't disassemble it. Yes, you can. Okay, so typical uh, power. In my case, I've got a North American uh, outlet, uh, North American uh, uh, plug, so that's good to go. Nothing unusual there. And in the box, okay, let's just get rid of the box because that's just useless. In the box, I have the laptop, and uh, instructions on how to turn it on. Isn't that interesting? Okay, so nothing really shocking there other than I've never seen instructions before. That's uh, super weird. But Lenovo is a weird company, so we don't uh, focus on that too much. So let's take this and inspect it uh, first of all. We'll just go around and look at the ports first. So power port, USB Type-C port. So instead of going over all of the ports, you can read what's on the screen if you're interested in something in particular. Let's go over the things that are actually interesting. So number three is interesting. The top right hand corner of the screen has an ambient light sensor and that helps dim the screen when you, it's at night. It also uh, helps figure out whether the backlit keyboard needs to be working. The next thing is the USB Type-C which is number 21 on the side. That is actually a Thunderbolt 3 connector which means you can connect Thunderbolt devices, which is pretty amazing. The third most interesting thing here is number 12, which is the, uh, uh, the stylus, the pen. There's actually a slot for the pen. Mine has it, which is great. And the weirdest uh, item is number 20, which is the mini ethernet connector. What it actually is, is a little jack that you can plug an ethernet adapter into. You cannot plug ethernet directly into it, at least not from any device I've ever seen, but on eBay, and Amazon, you can buy a little adapter if you want to physically plug in to the network. I'm sorry to say that the disassembly portion of our video has been destroyed, so we're going to overdub it and explain it like this. To get the back off, you have to remove these nine screws and then twist in the top left-hand corner, as you can see. Well, you can get to it from a number of places, but what I did is put a credit card in between the hinge and the back and sort of twist a bit. Uh, the only other thing to note is that these screws are very small and I did need to use tiny screwdrivers, sometimes called jeweler screwdrivers. A regular Phillips or star head, even a little green handled, was just too big. So as you can see, it's pretty standard inside. Uh, the battery has one connector and a couple of screws, easy to remove. The RAM just pops out like RAM always does. So if you're not familiar with that, you just push on the clips on the side and they uh, will that will eject the RAM. The M.2 SSD drive is buried under some tape, but you just lift that up and there's one screw at the end and you can pull that out. You can put in a 2240, a 2280, any standard M.2 SSD will fit into that slot, although you will have to move the lockdown screw at the end, which is again not very hard to do. Other than that, you can see there's the Wi-Fi card and if you look closely, you'll see the two cables coming off of it. Those are the antennas. One goes uh, up into the monitor and the other goes uh, around the keyboard and uh, that's so that you can position the laptop in pretty much any orientation and still get Wi-Fi coverage. 
Uh, there's the uh, little BIOS battery as well. Which, then there's the CPU fan and heat pipe. And if you ever have this uh, unit apart, you probably want to blow that out even if it looks clean. Just take some compressed air and give it a puff so it runs clean and cool. All right, now we're returning to actual video where we power the unit up, set it up, and run benchmarks. There we go. So this is now uh, loaded my wallpaper because it signed into OneDrive and pulled that down. In case you're wondering why that's different from yours. It's charging the battery. The battery is very low. Now look, before we do benchmarks, there's a couple things we have to do. The very first thing we have to do is go to settings and uh, patch this. So we're going to do that right now. Uh, the next thing we need to do, there we go, is to dump any uh, additional garbage software like McAfee or whatever. Let's see if this this probably came with something. Oh, it doesn't look like it. Wow, that's a shock. That's really good. Great. So it doesn't look like there's anything here that's too egregious. So that's very happy. So let's go back to home here. Uh, the next thing we'll want to do is go to Lenovo and update the BIOS. It's almost certainly old. Let's see if there's a Lenovo app on here. Yep, there is. System update. And we'll be on to the benchmark very shortly. It says Windows isn't activated, but it will be uh, on reboot. At least I expect it will be. Because the license key is now stored in the BIOS. There is no sticker on the back anymore with a license key on most of the Tier 1 manufacturers. So companies like Toshiba, which is now Sharp, Lenovo, Dell, HP, those guys. So let's see what's happening with their updates. And while we're waiting, let's take a quick look at Device Manager. Okay, so everything looks like it's installed. There are no bangs, which is happy. Okay, and it does have the Intel uh, 620 drive, which is great. So right now it's updating some drivers, which is just doing automatically in the background. Let's take a quick look at Task Manager, see what it's up to. The performance, yeah, this is snapping along quite nicely. There we go. And uh, I can use, let's see if I can use the, ooh. So the stylus is a powered stylus. See the uh, magnetic charger there? So that means that the stylus is dead. So what I'm gonna do is plug it back in here and have it charge automatically. We'll come back to it in a little while. Yeah, and right now it's pinned out because it's doing updates. So we'll let this sit and we'll come back. We'll reboot and run our benchmark. So before you uh, run any benchmarks, you need to turn off antivirus uh, scanning. So let's click on uh, Mr. Defender here, go to virus and threat protection, and then go to manage settings. It will turn off real-time protection. It's gonna bark in the bottom right-hand corner in a few seconds here. There it is, I don't care, go away. Okay, then let's just check task manager and make sure it's settled down. Yep, CPU's at 2%, that's happy. Bingo, okay, so let's go. I will not make you wait through these tests. We'll speed through them and we'll show you what it uh, looks like at the end. Uh, we'll run this three times because running a single benchmark is always a bad idea. Run it three, at least. This is, just to give you an idea, a Microsoft Surface Book 1 from 2015 comes in at about 650 and a Dell Latitude 5480 will come in at about 1300. So it gives you, and that's from about 2017. So this is nicely in the middle. The uh, uh, read speed here is quite good. The write speed is not great, but it's okay. And uh, yeah, so I think at this point uh, that this is a happy machine. This is about the right performance for this generation of machine. This is a business grade device. If you found this video useful or interesting, we'd really appreciate it if you would click like. And if you find this type of thing useful or interesting, please click subscribe. We spend a lot of time doing these types of things and we'd appreciate the support. It really helps us with the Google algorithms. If you have a question, just leave it or a comment and put it in the comments section and we'll get back to you within a day or two usually. Uh, you can also always get a hold of us at www.urtech, that's U-R-T-E-C-H dot C-A, U-R-Tech dot C-A. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.